Welcome back to another video. It's Brass TV Doncaster Rovers match preview. Let me know your score predictions and thoughts going into a game in the comments down below. Like the video if you do go on to do so and subscribe if you're new. All the support is massively appreciated. It's been too long. I've been gone for maybe a month. Um, some of you know, you know, I've, I put it on Twitter sort of briefly. I, I don't like doing all this sort of thing, you know. When, when, when something like that's happened, people put it all over and, you know. I, I'm not one for that, but I did put it on, but I won't be doing my videos because my nan was very unwell, um, and they were very close to her, and second of November, she passed away, and it, it was quite tough to process, but I came straight back into doing the videos, and, um, you know, and other things, and then I sort of realised that I, I need to just process it a bit, and, you know, it, it was quite difficult to do that, and then you have the things that you... Um, have to go through after that happens, in it, that event happens in your life, and you know you've you've got to sort of try and process that, and um, you know, like I say, it, it can be quite tough. So I, I sort of stopped doing my videos again. So I've been more inconsistent than um, than Bradford City this season. You know, sometimes you know you up and sometimes you're down, but um, I'm back now, and hopefully I'll be more consistent again and get back to doing you know the previews on a Thursday although it's a Wednesday and the match reaction on a Saturday although it will be on Friday night hopefully um, or Saturday morning so it'll be you know trying to get back to that and that routine of doing the videos and try and um, t try and do more as well because I, I want to try and get some more different content out there as well but we'll get straight into it the previews slightly changed a bit um, I've got rid of the past and presents now I, I, I don't imagine that anyone actually really liked them because you, it's, it was boring and bland, really. You know, there's no about them. I just give you three players who play for both teams. Whereas instead, I've turned that into a quiz. Then we'll do the head-to-head. -head. We'll do a bit on the opposition guide. You know, their key players, their form, our form, um, home and away. Bit about Grant McCann, the opposition manager. Then what can we expect from them? And I'll briefly talk about um, their change in ownership. Um, but you know, in a big change. In terms of a new owner coming in, I think it was someone inside, but a, a big figure leaving the club that Doncaster fans are very happy about. And then my lineup for the game on Friday night. So let me know your thoughts going into the game in the comments down below, and let's get into it then. Into the quiz then. In the year 2015, Braft City beat Doncaster 3 0 and 1 0. In the year 2015, that was. So that's the end of 14 15 and the beginning of 15 16 season. Can you name? the goal scorers for those four. Four different goal scorers. Can you name them? Now I'll give you four clues for them all. One of them, maybe a bit more easier to um to, to guess this one, was playing in his first spell for the football club. One of the players was a son of a very famous footballer. That's a very good clue, like you should get it from that. The other one is a bit like Marmite, is either loved or hated in the Braft City fan base because of one moment in a big game that he didn't get right. And then another player who I'd be astonished if anyone got this man. He has played for both teams and he was a defender. And uh, a third clue, I, 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 if you did guess him, I would um, think that you were probably Googling it because he was not the type of player who you'd remember playing for Braft City, never mind actually scoring his only goal for Braft City at that time so that's that's the question let me know your answers in the comments down below um and if if anyone gets all four or a couple even if you can only name one i will shout you out on the match reaction so and do let me know if you even like that section now we'll get into uh the head-to-head -head. sort of follows on from that um we played 87 games against doncaster rovers won 34 of them drawn 25 and lost um 28 i thought that said 87 which wouldn't have made much sense but yeah 28 of those games we've lost on the 25th of february 2023 a, a, a really exciting game this was for, for me because i thought the atmosphere in that away end was fantastic and that were one nil win with andy cook scoring from a corner header from uh adam clayton 30th of july 2022 the first game of that season it was a nil nil draw two red cards in that one can you remember who got those reds i can one of them was hilarious and the other one I still can't really remember what he did wrong. Um, 8th of September 2020, a 0-0 draw. 6th of April 2019, a 1-0 defeat. And a 2nd of September 2018, a 2-1 defeat to Doncaster Sun. So not the best record against them, um, but certainly not too bad either. Into the opposition guide if you like. The key players, now it's quite tough to pick three key players for Doncaster because 
Um, they've got some pretty average players, I'd say, at League 2 level. But they haven't really got anyone who really stands out. I mean, the three players who I've picked are probably the possibly their three better performing players or three better well known players and obviously if you don't cast a fan you watch them week in week out I certainly don't so you know certainly a lot more than me so do let me know what your opinions on your key players are in the comments down below um, but I think it'd probably be easy to pick three players who have massively underperformed this season for Doncaster because a lot of people had them in the playoff race I, I didn't think they were that good for that but um, certainly not to be right down there and to be so poor like they have been this season Luke Molyneux, obviously a player who always stands out from his Hartlepool days and doesn't hit the heights that I'd have expected of him when he signed for Doncaster, but still quite a tricky player, still a player that I do like to watch, and he has got four assists this season, and uh, when you see a lot of the goals that he's played in a part in the season, he's, he's played a big part in those, in the build-up to them. Joe Ironside has got eight goals in 21 this season, can be a handful up front. Foul just misses out, now I, I do look quite like him, again, quite an handful, big striker but for me um, he's missed too many good chances for Doncaster this season um, but again I scored a decent amount up there and Ben Close I'm not sure if he's available for this game I think he's recently been injured but he might be available but he's a tidy player he dictates play, he dictates play in the middle of the park and he's a, he's a very good player um, but has played at a good level for Portsmouth as well so into our results the last five league results for both sides a 5-0 defeat against Morecambe on the weekend was a terrible performance by Doncaster who got massively outplayed by a Morecambe side that are without Derek Adams and they're still doing pretty, still overachieving in my eyes. A nil no draw against Accrington Stanley, a 3-1 win against Colchester, a 3-2 defeat to Crewe again probably overachieving flying high under um, Lee Bell and a 2-0 defeat to Wimbledon as well making that just one win in five but two wins in our last seven league game. We've won our last five, but in terms of league results, a 2-0 win against Dillingham on the weekend, a 3-0 win against Forest Green Rovers on um, the Tuesday before the Salford game got called off, a 1-0 win against Accrington Stanley, a 4-2 defeat to Notts County, 4-0 down at half-time, changed the system to his 3-5-2, and we've been thriving ever since, and not looked back under Graham Alexander since playing this system, keeping clean sheets, scoring loads of goals, and being very entertaining. And a 2 1 defeat against Bauer, which was Graham Alexander's first game as Bradford City manager. Our away form leaves us 7th with 14 points from 12 league games, and Donny have picked up 17 home points from 11. So, looking at the dugout for the Doncaster end, it is Grant McCann who is there for the second time. I thought he won fairly sacked at Hull when Liam Rossini replaced him. I think there were 19, 10 points away from relegation, they got sacked which for me was quite unfair, considering Hull's expectations then. But when you look at where Liam Rossini has took Hull since he took over, and I think they're in the playoffs now, or in a playoff race, and he's doing really well with that squad. So maybe not so unfair when you look at what Rossini has transformed that tight side into. And again, I thought he won fairly sat to Peterborough, only five points off the playoffs, but then Ferguson takes them into a playoffs and... I think they're still in around there now. So, again, when you look at who replaced them and how they did with that squad, they, they improved it. And now, currently, um, Grant McCann at Doncaster is massively underperforming with a squad that, and, and, and him as a manager that you expected a lot more from. But I do think, from an outsider looking in, that they need, do need to give him a bit more time to make that squad his own and to get them playing in, in, in a better way. And maybe with that change of ownership that's coming, that might help. Um, in build that squad but his record against City six games three wins and three defeats his record against Graham Alexandra though which gives us great optimism going into this game he's managed five drawn two lost three no wins against Alexandra the Great so what can we expect from Doncaster Rovers coming into this game and maybe a bit about us as well there's got to be a reaction a 5-0 defeat to Morecambe Grant McCann claimed that his side were rightly booed off after that 5-0 defeat. He's brutal, he's honest, and that's another thing I do like about Grant McCann, but we're not here to talk about him. David Blunt, though, has left as chairman of Doncaster Rovers after years of protests, and um, they're self-sustainable. That makes them like us, I suppose, and maybe that regime didn't go well with Doncaster with their own, and maybe being a bit like Rupp again, I'm outside looking, and I don't know what's happened, but I, I guess that he wasn't in the public eye is like like up in quite a distant owner um and obviously been going backwards since 
their League One days when they're in the playoffs. So um, a change was probably needed, and hopefully for them they can sort of try and get a structure to the club because I think that's something that's been missing and that's something that's definitely missing with us. Um, although the one of the results that begs to differ that after the protest that we were trying to get um, protest. I keep saying protest. Um, the protest that we were trying to um, build around the Notts County game that didn't quite get off the ground, um, to say the least. Um, both teams will give everything, and I think that suits us. I think that the fact that Doncaster will come out fighting might give them a scrappy game. I, I wasn't expecting it from a Grant McCann side. I'd probably expect them to be trying to keep the ball a bit more. They do like to control games, but with the fact that there's this new sort of fresh feel around the place with David Blunt leaving, a 5-0 defeat, poor results, they might come out for a more scrappy game and to try and fight with us. And I think that suits us more. I, I think we've become this aggressive team that aren't afraid to put tackles in, aren't afraid to leave one in on the opponent. We've become ruthless in our style of play, which is something we haven't had for years and something that um, Mark Hughes didn't really want from his team. We were very professional, we were very um, sort of a, a nice team, you know, we weren't we didn't have any bite to us. When I've looked at Doncaster, especially in the last five games, what I'll say is a really poor defence that can't stick with the men in the box. When the crosses come in, when corners are getting whipped in, they lose the men in the box too easily. They're a bit of a soft touch. And whilst on about that, whilst when they're up against physical teams, they're weak and they look like a team full of kids. And I think that's something that can be levelled with Doncaster this season, especially when I've um, watched them at, at a distance. They're easy to bypass their press. And watch teams p pass through the midfield way too easily and get to the defence and then, you know, the heavens open. And uh, that's happened all too often, especially against Morecambe, um, more than any other team that, that happened. But they've conceded a lot of goals this season, um, which is a problem. My 11 for the game, it, I'm, I'm sticking with it. You know, there's going to be no surprises there. I'm sticking with the team, the winning team, and that, I'm sure Graham Alexander will. He speaks very well in his press conferences and he speaks about keeping a winning team you get the mentality from it and there's no need to change something that works and it, i definitely get that and everyone's working well in the system everyone's fighting for each other but they're playing for the manager and playing for the manager gets associated when you're struggling um you, you know but it in it's just buying into what he believes and what he wants you to do and i get that everyone's 100 percent bought into graham alexander and the football club but like the video if you did subscribe if you're new and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below do the quiz question let me know your score predictions let me know your team and any other thing that you want to tell me in the comments down below please do it because it is massively appreciated all the support that i do get in the videos it don't go unnoticed have a good one